Good morning, y'all. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to say too much, at least I don't plan to, um, about about Robbie Zacharias than what's already been said based on the facts and based on the uh, evidence and information that has been that has been received. Um, it's definitely an unfortunate situation. It's definitely um, an issue that um, all of us, I believe, all of us must do some serious um, self-inventory and self-reflection on our own lives. And, and what do I mean by that? What I mean by that, we need to check our hearts. <clears throat> We need to check our hearts on 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 things and regarding uh, people first with ourselves and then with those that we may admire. And some of you, even those that you adulate and that you idolize. And that's and that's the sad reality. The reality regarding Robbie Zacharias, um, just based on the evidence, not speculation, not rumor. None of that, based on the evidence, uh, was that this man lived a life of hypocrisy. Those are the facts. There's a there's a there's a 12 page report from RZIM, Rabbi Zacharias International Ministries, um, detailing based on what their accounts were regarding um, the scandals, regarding the, the sins, the, the sexual abuse. Um, and things of that nature um, regarding this man. I'm, I'm going to say this because I, I've, I've read the comments from some of you um, already. Why are we talking about a man he's already dead? Let the man rest. Well, that's if he's resting. Can we Can we just deal with that? That's if he's resting. That's if he's truly repented and he's now resting in Jesus. Because now all we can do is leave that decision to the judge who judges rightly, who judges righteously and rightly. Um, but we cannot deny the facts. We cannot deny that people who who tried to come forward were shunned and were uh, fear mongered, were intimidated, were discredited. Can't deny that because of those are the facts. Um, I think Julianne Thompson is the name. Um, she came forward and what happened? She was discredited. She was disbelieved. She was, you know, seen as someone just trying to tear down a man of God. Only to come out to find out that what she said was true. So what did, what does that mean for for us, for those of us as Christians? When we die we're going to leave a legacy. We're going to have people say things about us. Whether right or wrong, whether true or false, I pray that what we do as Christians, we give the enemies of God no reason to blaspheme. If there's sin in our lives, if there's hypocrisy in our lives, I pray that we confess and repent of it. You know, it's one thing if you are an unbeliever, and then you come to Christ, those things are under the blood of Christ. But when you and I are professing believers and we are living a lifestyle that we've seen reported, that gives the enemy of that gives the enemies of our God reason to blaspheme. That's that's Romans two. Yeah, that, that's Romans two, seventeen to twenty one. You who teach this, you who say this, do you do this? Do you do that? 
He's talking about patterns and habits of lifestyle. We're not talking about perfection. We're talking about Holy Spirit led direction. What what is the panorama and course of our life? What does it mean? So when a person looks at my life, when they look at your life, yes, they're going to see this with instances of that. But they shouldn't see our lives as this. Just sin, 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 sin. But yet we claim to be walking with God this way. Um, so again, some of you are taking issue with people posting in the article. You know, I waited until the facts came out. The facts are out. And now some of you are still taking issue with the saying that the man is dead. Why are we talking about a man that's dead? The same reason why we talk about every man that dies. You know, I did a video uh, about Billy Graham when he died. And I talked about his theology and how he presented a universal theology regarding salvation. He embraced Catholics as brothers and and embraced uh, all forms of anti-biblical ideologies and beliefs regarding salvation. Remember his conversation and his interview uh, that he had with the uh, with the gentleman from uh, from California. What is his name? Y'all know who I'm talking about. The name escapes me right now. Um, He's dead now at the Crystal Cathedral in, in California. Um, you know, the positivity preacher. I forgot that man's name, but he was on the interview. Billy Graham was talking about the wider mercy and saying that, you know, uh, people who are from different religions and different uh worldviews that are antithetical to scripture, antithetical to the word of God, they're going to be in heaven. Yeah, I'm talking about Robbie right now, Johnny, but I'm talking about, I'm trying to figure out the name, the guy from the Crystal Cathedral. Who he's yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Robert Shuler. Thank you, Tony. Robert Shuler, Robert Shuler. Look up the interview with Billy Graham and Robert Shuler. He preached Universalism. And what did Billy Graham do? Billy Graham affirmed it. Yeah, it was Robert Shuler. Yep, it was Shuler there. Um, and so, yeah, exactly, Johnny. He embraced the Pope too. That's, what, that's my point. That's my whole point. So when this man died, I responded and I gave my statement regarding this man's views, his ecumenical views. It was totally unbiblical, totally ungodly. Yeah, he preached uh, some truth in his crusades and all that kind of stuff. But what does that what does that mean? What does that matter if you're leading people astray and sending them to hell with false doctrine? What does it matter? And let me tell you something. Jesus said it, not me. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father shall enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy your name? Did we not prophesy? Did we not teach in your name? And in your name, cast out devils and in your name, perform many miracles. In other words, by the authority that you have given, we did this. By the power that you have, we did this. We performed these things. And what did Jesus do? He didn't discount the teaching if it was true. He didn't discount the miracles if they were authentic. He didn't discount the many good deeds that they did if it benefited others. He said, I will tell them plainly in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, depart from me. I never knew you. You, not who sinned one time, not who struggles and has fought and is fighting 
sin as Paul did in Romans 7? No, you who practice lawlessness. That's what sends you and I to hell. A pattern and lifestyle of sin. A pattern and lifestyle of hypocrisy. A pattern and lifestyle of offenses that fly in the face of a thrice holy God. That's what does that. So, please do not tell me it's wrong for me to talk about Ravi when some of you same people, some of you same people had no problem when I talked about Miles Monroe. No problem. Had no problem when I talked about Miles Monroe. Oh, because Miles Monroe is a false teacher. So what? Miles Monroe is still an image bearer. He's still made in the, in the Imago Day. And I talked about him. I talked about other people that were considered to be false teachers. Paul Crouch, when he died, talked about him. Kenneth Hagen, when he died, talked about him. Why is it that when it comes to some of your favorite idols, they're untouchable? Show me book, chapter, and verse where that is promoted, that we can't talk about your idol because it's your idol, but we can talk about false teachers when they die. Oh, yeah, they're going to hell. They're busting hell wide open. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, 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 not, not, not Ravi. No, 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 not this person. No, 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 not that person. Don't you put your mouth on, on Ravi. Don't you put your mouth on my favorite preacher when, they're, when they've died. But I don't see that in scripture. What to learn, what to grow. To look at people's examples, matter of fact, when you read first Corinthians 10, exactly, Talia. When we talk, it, come on now, Eddie Long, I talked about him. See, <laughs> y'all's some of y'all's idolatry, I know it's selective, I know, I know, but those of us, those of us who strive to be consistent, we see your consistent inconsistencies, and we're just calling them out. Because your consistent inconsistencies causes other people to be just like you. Why? Because no student is above his teacher. But when fully trained, will be like them. So when you tell people, oh, we can't talk about this person. We can't talk about that person. We can't talk about that person. But whoa, 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 whoa. We can talk about these people because these people are not saved. I'm just asking, where do we find that? That is so anti-James 2.1. If we're Christians, God has called us to call balls, balls, and strikes, strikes. No matter who's at play. If they got a cork bat, they're out of the game. If they're trying to cheat, they're out of the game. It doesn't matter. When the umpire gives the orders and gives the rules, that's it. We're to call it as we see it. That's what we're called to do. This favoritism, this bias that I see go on and has been going on in the body of Christ, especially among those of you who are reformed. But your consistency is deformed. Can we please stop with the bias? And I know I'm making a plea. When we see bias emerge and sprout up in our own hearts, we need to deal with it. We need to deal with it, especially when we're going public with it. Because people are looking at you and I, especially those of those of us who have a little smidgen of influence.
I don't, I don't want to lead people astray. God knows I don't. I, I don't want to lead my family astray. I don't want to lead my friends astray. I don't want to lead anybody who watches my videos and lives astray. Why? Because I'm going to be held accountable for that. That's why. I don't know, Adrian. I, I don't know. I mean, th there was a similar situation that happened that I was aware of years ago when I was in Bible college. Um, one of my uh, theology professors was was exposed and had a ten year uh, had a ten year affair, and once the institution found out about it and realized that he had been doing this for ten years, ten years. I mean, now he's 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 gone. And, and what I'm saying is hypocrisy, that's a dangerous thing, y'all. Listen, listen, all of us have sin issues that we struggle with, right? None, none of us here on this terra firma are perfect. I got that. We got the memo on that. We got that. But we're not to justify sin and let alone live in habitual practice and habit of sin. We can't do that and profess to be Christians. It's a difference between struggling and fighting and warring against sin as Paul talked about in Romans 7. The good that I want to do, I desire to do it, Lord. I want to live right, but I see this principle of this sin that's in me that's causing me to do the very thing that I hate to do. We struggle in sin. We don't sit in sin. We struggle with sin. We don't celebrate sin. We fight and we war against sin. We don't play footsies with it. And that's what all of us as Christians, all of us, when there's sin in our life, we're to deal with it. Or God is going to deal with us. So where is Robbie right now? I'm not the fourth member of the Trinity. So I can't give that answer. But I can give you this. I can give you this. We better be very, very mindful and take this walk that we are living called Christianity seriously. Because God says in his word, he will not be mocked. You don't play with God. And one day, we're going to all give an account for what we do. The Bible says, make sure your sin will find you out. If we're living in sin, it's just a matter of time before that thing pop up. Thank you, Will. It's a matter of time. Your sin will find you out. Your sin, my sin, all of our sin. If we're practicing sin, we're living hypocritical lives, it's going to come out. So again, I'm not talking about you and I fighting and struggling in sin and we, we've sinned here and, and we're making it right and we've done what we, we needed to do to, to confess and repent and we're now pushing forward. That's sanctification. This report that we read, that some of you read, that ain't sanctification. I'm sorry. Carrie said what, what spot the comment about, about Robbie, the report that came out. Unfortunately, the report that came out through his um, through his organization and um, also through the attorneys, it's 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 a fact. It's an unfortunate fact and it's an unfortunate reality that this man was living a double life. And other people were involved. And it had been going on for the trajectory of this man's entire ministry. I mean, those are the facts. Those are, that's the reality. We, we, can, we can argue what we want, but only fools argue with facts. 
did his family know this? Um, I, 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 they know now. Um, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, I haven't even read all of the report, but I read enough to know that it is very troubling. It is very, very troubling. And again, we we listen. We're God's ambassadors. Imperfect as we are, flawed as we are, sometimes marred with sin as we are, but you know what? God says that we're more than conquerors through him. Yes, his whole ministry. Um but yeah, you know, some of some of you, you know, are tripping about me discussing it. And I just strive to be consistent. I discussed other people who died in their life. False teacher and faithful teachers. So we can learn and grow from it. When, when, when people die and they're not saved and I see Christians say rest in peace. I know that they either, I, this is what I'm, I'm drawing conclusions with. Either one or two things. They don't understand what they're saying. When they say rest in peace, because they don't, they have not studied. The Bible says there is no peace given to the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked, say of God. Um, but either they don't know the scriptures that speak about that God only gives rest to those that belong to Him, or. They don't care what the Bible says. And they just present false hope. Everybody that dies is not resting in Jesus. Okay? That, that's a fact. Because everybody ain't going to heaven when they die. But you know what? You better make sure you're going. I better make sure I'm going. I used, I used to, when I was a kid, my, my, my dad used to say, you know, Lord, if I'm not saved, Lord, save me. I want to be. I want to be sure I'm saved. Lord, save me. I, I, I don't. I don't want to stand before you, you and you tell me depart from me. I never knew you. Because you said this, but you lived this way. What came out of your lips wasn't seen in your life. I don't want that. Eternity is a long time. Not to be able to make up. There ain't no makeup classes. There ain't no makeup courses in eternity. Once we're gone, that's it. We're going to be either with him or apart from him. What would I say is the message to the church concerning Ravi? Concerning Ravi? Accountability. Number one, accountability. Number two, examination. First with ourselves. Paul told the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Accountability, self-examination. Also, the church's responsibility is to disciple the saved and evangelize the unsaved. These parachurch ministries... They are supposed to be para, meaning they come alongside churches. And so if I'm coming alongside a church, there should be some sense of mutual accountability. So we need accountability. We need self-examination. We need a sense of understanding the church's role is to evangelize and to disciple it is not rzim it is not grace to you it is not legionnaire or any other parachurch ministry's responsibility to do the church's job but the church jesus said in matthew 16 upon this rock i will build my church he didn't say upon this rock i will build my parachurch ministry he said no i will build my church the ecclesia the called out ones. And so if he's building his church, 
then he's going to build it to his specifications. In every living stone, he's going to place and put in as he sees fit. Another thing I see, um, Brother Keelan, is God is cleaning house. You know, we talk about spring cleaning. But, you know, <laughs> ain't no spring cleaning with God. He has second cleaning. And I'll say nanosecond cleaning. He's constantly cleaning and purifying his church. He's constantly plucking and pruning and pulling those things that are not like him or belong to him. God is building his church. And if he's building his church, then we need to be a part of that project. Making sure we're doing what God has called us to do. He's cleaning. He's cleaning house. And, and, and again, if we know the word, if we know the word of God, First Peter 4, 17 said, for it is now time that judgment begins where not not it begins in the White House, not it begins in City Hall, not that it begins on the street corner, not that it begins at the no local nightclub, not that it begins at Congress. No, no, no. Judgment begins in the house of God. God is dealing with his people. God is dealing with his bride. God is dealing with his church. It's beginning with us. God is cleaning his church. God is sanctifying his church. God is pruning his church. God is preparing his people to meet him. And not everybody is clean. No different than when Jesus washed the disciples' feet and he said, you are all clean, but not all of you. And I believe in John 13, the text says that he was referring to Judas. The disciples didn't know that he was referring to Judas. But Judas was right there. And in that symbolism of foot washing, Jesus said, you are all clean, but not all of y'all. Not all of you. Not all of you. There are people that may do good things, but that don't mean that they belong to God. Have we not realized that in this past election? Have we not realized that among those that claim to be Christians? We can do a lot of good things, but good things don't mean that you're godly. You can do a lot of righteous deeds. And that does not mean that you're found in the righteousness of Christ through his shed blood. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So th that's those are my things. Th that's, that's what I believe we are to be as a church thinking about. We need to have some sense of a biblical, a biblical accountability. Understanding the, the church's role. Understanding that it needs to be mutual accountability with, with these parachurch ministries. And lastly, understanding that, that, that God is cleaning house. He's, he's cleaning house. He's cleaning house. Whatever doesn't belong is getting swept away. He's taking it out of the way. So that's, that's, that's all I wanted to say, y'all. Um, again it's an unfortunate situation but you know what if you have a problem with me commenting about something that is made public the problem is not with me the problem is with yourself because I've been, I've been by God's holy and majestic grace consistent in situations like this emerge Ravi Zacharias is nothing but a man. He was nothing. He was a man. I said, you and I are human, just like Ravi was. 
you and I are not exempt from having our lives examined. We're not. So this is not a bash fest. This is not me beating up the dead. This is me warning and me encouraging and me admonishing the church that we need to take inventory and observe what is going on around us. Somebody disagree with what I said, and I'm just giving my my personal observation. The idolatry and man worship and fanboyism is stronger, I believe, in reformed and charism and, and reforming Calvinist circles, rather, excuse me, than in non-reformed and charismatic circles. And here's the reason why I'm saying that. I'm saying that because we have this image that we hold to every jot, tittle, and letter of this book. That we are known to be the expositors of this book. That we have a corner market on this book of truth. So then it presupposes that, well, Reformed and, 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 and Calvinist people, you know, they, 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 should, they should know better about idolatry. Well, newsflash. Newsflash. Just look at what's been going on. Let's look at what's, what's been going on on my feed. You tell me. You tell me. Am I, am I off in my observation and assessment? <laughs> am I off when I say that there are people within that group, within the Reformed and Calvinist circles, that when who's who is mentioned, oh man, they, they, they get hot and bothered and moist like a chocolate cake when a person's name is mentioned. Yeah, I said it. Some of you act like hot and bothered women when your favorite theologian is in town or your favorite theologian or Bible teacher is preaching, but you have local shepherds whose responsibility is to feed you the word of God and they get no love. They, they get no appreciation and honor as the Bible says they are to do. But, but, but God forbid if, if your idol dies or your idol is taken home, you 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 become undone, and let me let me just go ahead and say this. I'm I'm because I'm already out here. Y'all already know how I get down. I wish death on no one, no one. But the Bible says it's clear. It's appointed to man once to die, and after that we face the judgment. God tarries, the son of God tarries. You're not gonna see me here forever. I'm gonna be gone. If you don't take me first. But the way some of you idolize people, you're gonna be you're gonna be a wreck. You're gonna be a nervous wreck. You you're gonna be on suicide watch, some of you, because you're not gonna know what to do when that person is gone. Praise God that Joshua was not what well, Joshua was not like that. When God took his servant home, Moses, and in Joshua one. The Bible told Joshua, God told Joshua in the Bible, rather, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Yeah, they mourned for him for 40 days and whatever. They, they, they cried, they weep, they, they reminisce on the love they had and all that what Moses did for two million plus people. They reflected, they honored him, they memorialized him, they did all of that. And after all that was done, God told Joshua, boy, that's my servant. Moses, my servant is dead. Now go. Now go. God didn't sit up there and cry alongside Joshua. And, and no, you got a job to do. There's a mission that I have called you to complete. Josh, get up and go and cross over to that Jordan. 
Who's your Moses? When your Moses is gone, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and ponder? You're going to sit there and cry and weep for days and days and days and days on end to where life doesn't go on? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and place for everything under the sun. Yeah, there's a time to cry, and then there's a time to stop crying and get up and do what God has called you and I to do. God told Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Yeah, he's gone. And I took him. And, and notice, the Bible said that God buried Moses. God buried him. God put him in in the ground so much so to where God knew if someone knew where the body of Moses was they would have made him some type of relic like you see the Roman Catholic Church do with special things we knew that with in the book of Jude that Michael and the devil was contesting over the body of Moses he knew where it was but human beings didn't know where it was My point, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is this. Whatever your idol or idols for some of us are, understand that God doesn't like that. Matter of fact, excuse me, God hates that. God doesn't want anyone else to be compared to. He should be the only number one in our life and in our hearts and on our lips. Period. See, God has a right to be jealous. Because who is like him? <laughs> I mean, who who can you compare who can you compare Yahweh to? Nobody. Can't compare him to anyone. You cannot put him on par with anything because anything that you put him on par to is created. So you can't compare God to anything. So any idol or idols that we have, we better do away with them before God does away with us. And again, um, you don't have to like what I've said. Pray that the Holy Spirit of God make it make it real to you and make it plain to you. Bring the cookies down from the top shelf and let you take a bite. But but this appeal is to all of us, to each and every one of us. The Apostle John says, "Little children, guard yourselves from idols. Guard yourselves." Put a garrison over your heart. Protect yourself from anything that would draw you and I away from our love for God and our devotion for God. It's okay to appreciate what people that God has used and his sovereign, his sovereign purpose and plan appreciate them yes celebrate them yeah but to adulate them that means to worship them and to make them like Christ in your life no no yeah I know sis yeah, you can't tell B. Tatum nothing matter of fact B. Tatum probably looking like Martin Lawrence did when he fought Tommy Hearns. Remember that? His face was all busted up. Yeah, we I met I witnessed a I was I witnessed a, a theological gang banging last night. I wish I witnessed a theological gang rape as well last night on IG. But that's another lie for another time. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. Um again. Let's be consistent. <clears throat> Let's be consistent. 
Let's be Christ-like. Matter of fact, when we are Christ-like, we will be consistent. I, I want to be a predictable Christian, don't you? I don't want to be an unpredictable Christian. I don't want to be that. I want people to know what I'm going to say and do when there are issues of morality and sin that comes over and that emerges or comes across the precipice of our society. I, I want I want it to be said of me. Yeah, I know what Seiko going to say. Yeah, I know what April going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what Jeffrey going to say. I know what Suzanne going to say. I know what Sharon going to say. I know what Brenda going to say. We, we ought to be that kind of people. We ought to be predictable in our holiness. Yeah. But that's our, that, that's what we, we're, we're called to be that. Matter of fact, you shall be holy in all your behavior. For it is written, said the God, you shall be holy for I am holy. So, yeah, we ought to be predictable. We ought to be predictable in our walk in everything that we do. Why? Because we serve God. We represent him on this planet. And this is why I say at the end of every life, whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. It's not a cliche. It's in the scriptures. First Corinthians 10 31. Whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. What do I think about Dr. Tony Evans? He's also a Kirkland spiritual father. Um, Tony Evans has been slipping. I, I, I'll just say that. I, I don't I don't I don't follow Tony Evans' ministry uh, anymore. Uh, I stopped following Tony Evans' ministry uh, when he started dabbling with Kenneth Ulmer um, years ago. I just, I just stopped rocking with him. Um, he's, he's on some other stuff. So, uh, But anyway, let me get in here and get myself uh, ready for work and get my day started. I love you all. I love you all. Hope you all love me. Hope you all have a blessed day. Be safe out there if you're in those uh, uh, cold areas, winter areas. Um yeah, be careful. Be warm. Be safe. Um, and until next time, again, y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. God bless.